Shalom, beloved. A word. I'm going to speak this as the spirit moved me to speak it. So if I move throughout, just bear with me. But before we begin, a prayer. Yah of our ancestors, Yah of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let us realize the truth and the glory and the power in you and give you all praise, honor, and glory do your majesty. Thou art real and let thy reality and thy truth be abundantly clear to us. Let it come forth. Oh, I gotta stop this. No, I'm gonna keep going, forgive me. Let your light shine in us and cleanse us of all ignorance and darkness and bring us into your glorious light as we give you praise, honor, and glory this day and thank you for the bread of life that you feed us with your word that has come down from heaven. We receive it in praise, honor, and glory of you. In the mighty name of Yeshua, amen. I'm going to give this as it came to me. This is the book of John chapter 11. I'm going to skip around throughout. Now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and his sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him saying, Lord, behold, him whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. Remember beloved, many of the things that befall us are so that we can see the glory, the power and the majesty of the most high and that others can witness it and believe. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the son of God might be glorified therefore. The son of Yah, the word of Yah. Now, Jesus loved Martha, her sister, and Lazarus. When he heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. He did not get up rushing. Many of us call into the Lord to save us when things are going wrong. And because we don't see an immediate answer, we think he's rejected us. We think some sin that we have committed is keeping him from answering us. But sometimes it's for his glory, his honor, and the edification of those around who see the glory and power of the most high and his word come to pass. He stayed in the town. As a matter of fact, he went unto Judea where they had tried to kill him. They tried to stone him. And his disciples were questioning him about it. But he's talking about, Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. This world is nighttime. There is no light of the word coming from the world. Therefore it's darkness. But the word of the most high has filled us with light and his Holy Spirit. These things he said, said he, and after that he said unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may wake him out of his sleep. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Many of us, beloved, have reached a point in our lives where the things we love, we believe are dead. Things within ourselves, we believe are dead. Though we tried everything we could to save them, 
we believe they are dead. I'm going to move throughout. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days. Many times these dreams, these hopes of ours, they are not only in the appearance of being dead, they have been buried. Some of us have buried things that have left us depressed, feeling hopeless, feeling like we're too old, feeling like we're unskilled, feeling like I failed too many times. And we put it in the graveyard. But Yeshua HaMashiach is coming to that grave in you. Now, Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Mary, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Martha went to meet him, forgive me. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been there, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus answered unto her and said, thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Many of us, when we speak the word of our father over our situations, we have to remember these are not the words of a mere man. They are the words of the most high. And he is the resurrection and the life. Even those things that you've buried, even those things you have given up on, Many times you've gone through these things because Yahuwah is going to get the glory and show you the power of his word. We're going to move down. Now, Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. Then the Jews then, which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her saying, she goeth unto the grave to weep there. Many of us have friends and family that not only do we weep for lost dreams and lost hopes, they weep with us, but the resurrection and the life is standing at the grave of your hopes and dreams, beloved. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying unto him, Lord, if thou had been there, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled because he is moved on all points. Just as we feel, so did he. He was made not only of the spirit of the most high, but he was born the son of man so that he understands when he goes before our father, when he steps in for us, he knows all about it because he's experienced it. He's felt it in his own spirit. He knows what we feel but he also knows the power and the majesty and the great terribleness of our father. When Jesus said, therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in spirit and was troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Yeshua wept. Then said the Jews, behold how he loved him. And some of them said, couldn't this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. 
Many of us, our stony hearts, they won't let Yahuwah's power in, but his word has come to the grave to remove that stony heart and to give us a heart of flesh, that circumcised heart that is sensitive to the word of the most high. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he has been dead four days. Many of us, because so much time has passed, we believe that those dreams, those hopes are too late to resurrect. I'm too old, I'm too tired, it's been too many years, my money's gone, I've tried over and over, but this time, the word of life is there, the resurrection is there, your faith is standing there, you are not speaking mortal words, you are speaking words that cleanse the atmosphere. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid that stony heart. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. Many of us have wrapped up our hopes and dreams and buried them, wrapped them away, prepared them for death and placed them behind a stony heart which refuses to believe anymore. But Yeshua is there now, the word of the most high. He's standing at that door. And he that which was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave cloths, and his face was bound with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. And many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. Beloved, I want to share this. It's in many books. He had to remove the stone. That stone, beloved, that stone. I am in the book of Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and give you an heart of flesh, a heart sensitive to the word, a heart that responds, a heart that believes. Nothing is impossible for the most high. Many of you are in your Lazarus moments. Many of you have other people around you grieving your loss. But Yeshua isn't there to weep over the grave and leave you there. He's the resurrection and that life, that life that God has given you to live and live it more abundantly we look now in the book of Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 19. And I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within them and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and I will give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them and they shall be my people and I will be their God. When we are in the book of Ezekiel chapter 11, I'm going to the 16th verse. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they should come. He is a sanctuary unto you, beloved, and his word is raining down as his spirit is ignited in you because that stone is rolled away. It doesn't matter how long you have laid in that grave. 
He is resurrecting Yashoreth. And all you have to do is believe. It doesn't matter how long you have waited. It doesn't matter how long you gave up. It doesn't matter that you buried it so long ago and he didn't come when you immediately called. No, beloved, he is there amongst us. And many of us are going through our Lazarus moments. Yes, yes, yes. Understand we're in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter four, chapter five, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That stony heart. Many of you are in your Lazarus moment. Now you have to believe. And he is calling you to come forth. As a new creature, the stone is rolled away. And he is giving you a heart of flesh. Just as he rolled that stone away from the grave of Lazarus, he's rolling the stone away from the cover of your heart that you are sensitive, that you hear him, the resurrection and the life. There are others in your lives. They come and they are there to still kill and destroy in this world of darkness. But he's walking in the light. He is the light. He is cleansing us from all those dead things around us, all those things that have been given up on, beloved, believe. It is your faith, your pursuit of the Most High, speaking his word back to him, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Many of you are Lazaruses, and you have laid too long in the grave but he has called you forth unto the light and that stone is rolled away. You are no longer bound in dead things like grave clothes. Your face is shining with new light, the light of the Lord. And I am here to share this truth with you. You are having your Lazarus moment. Come forth, come forth and remember he is the resurrection and the life, beloved. It is a word. May it be received as the Lord gave it to me. And those who are meant to hear it, let it do exactly what the Most High purposed it to do. Come forth. Do not worry about what the world says. Do not try to reason it away because the spirit does not yield to the mind's reason but the mind yields to the spirit. When you are a child of the most high, finally, we're going into the book of Psalms, chapter 146. Praise ye the Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth. In that very day, his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Yasharel, you are having your Lazarus moment. The stone is rolled away. A word, shalom.